Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to use Guar Gum as a thickener to help prevent colors from spreading when we are hand painting yarn. I am going to paint two skeins of yarn in the same colorway, but the dye from one of the skeins will have some Guar Gum in the solution to make it thicker and the dye in the other skein won't. I have chosen Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool for this experiment because colors tend to strike less quickly to this yarn base compared to some of the superwash yarns that I use in my other videos. So my hypothesis is that without Guar Gum we will see the colors spread out um, a fair amount from where I paint it but we will have sharper application of color when we are painting with the Guar Gum. But let's get started. Guar Gum is a great thickener that you can use um, with acid dyes and food coloring, but if you're using fiber reactive dyes, you'll want to use a different kind of thickener because the fiber reactive dyes can react with the Guar Gum. I mixed a Guar Gum solution of one half teaspoon of the Guar Gum powder per one cup of water. Um, as our little stock and it is nice and thick. Uh, I like to mix it with warm water in a magic bullet blender so that way it can be nice and fairly evenly blended. If you would like to watch me blend and mix it at these proportions, um, I will link to a previous episode of Dipet Weekly in the video description and iCard. I am pre-soaking the 200 grams of yarn in some tap water with three tablespoons of white vinegar for a minimum of 30 minutes. In each of these cups, I have a third of a cup of either our Guar Gum solution, which is quite thick, um, or just plain tap water. And now I am going to add a third of a cup of a 1% stock solution to each one. So here's a third of a cup of 1% navy, which clearly it's going to require some mixing. And you can already see the difference between the Guar Gum and the non Guar Gum solutions. That is the color frozen. I am mixing the colors this way so that way there is. The, whoops, the same concentration um, in the Guar Gum and the non Guar Gum solutions. And finally, we will be using Dharma Deep Purple. These are all Dharma acid dyes, and I will have a link to all of them in the video description. Uh, the Deep Purple is looking a bit red, but it does sort of shift on the yarn. Now for mixing the colors I will go into the non guar gum before the thicker solution you know and if you look it's just I don't know I don't know if it's as apparent on camera how much thicker it is but you can certainly tell that more mixing is definitely required and actually the cover color overall is a little less even um, just because of how thick the guar gum dyes are. I squeezed out most of the water from the yarn but there's definitely still a little bit in it because I sort of want to maximize the difference we see between the dyes that have guar gum and the ones that don't. I have protected my counter with a shower curtain and then I have some plastic wrap on top of it so that way after we're done hand painting I can wrap up the yarn and steam it in a dedicated dye steamer. I am a little nervous about the way that the purple is going to end up but <laughs> we will see. So let's just start with that purple. I don't know why it's looking so brown but this is that deep purple but you know what it is what it is I think that maybe on heat it's changed before I'm just gonna go with it 
and if it ends up being this reddish brown then that is what it will be and I'll just know for next time and now for the guar gum one I'm not sure if you can see just how thick this color is on the brush it is very thick um, and actually you can kind of see as I'm putting it on here it's really not going as far at all Hopefully it doesn't like drip on the other one I've never actually hand painted with this I have used it in goodness I've used it in I've used it on stencils, so I guess that's technically hand painting, but I've never tried, you know, doing a hand painted colorway like this. And so it's a little hard to see. But the colors are definitely like I'm sort of going for one like brushes width, and the colors are definitely spreading out more where I don't have the guar gum. But I think that the color is also a little deeper over there overall so we will see um, let's go to the next color let's try the frozen this is the one with the guar gum so it's funny I expected that I was going to enjoy this a lot more than I think I am actually in practice. I'm zooming in so that way you can get a better sense, but I think that, you know, it's very globby, which is good. Um, so maybe it would be nice to do this with like squeeze bottles or something versus the, the brush, so that way I can get the color on a lot, a little easier. I'm not sure how sharp these edges will end up overall, but this is what we will see. I didn't even tag the guar gum versus the non guar gum separately, but I will say, okay, just painting with that, the dye comes out of the brush significantly easier without the guar gum than it does with the guar gum. If you look at them sort of side by side, uh, the area that I have up here is, is wider. Um, there is more sort of like spread at those edges, whereas the edges right here are fairly sharp. Um, so I think that if you wanted to maybe like use a really small brush and hand paint speckles or something without them spreading, this would be, guar gum would be a great way to do that. And here's the navy, which is looking very, very purple to me. Um, but I know also ends up looking more blue once it is um, has been dissolved. Not sure if it's the the that it the acid helps or if it is some heat. That ends up helping. How's that? Penetration is actually not bad. Some of the color in the interior areas is not as bright, um, but I think that that is likely um, just a result of the colors not spreading very far at all. Try to do like a nice thin navy section over here, just like I did on the other side. Yeah, so with the foam brushes, it is way, way, way easier to apply the dye. Um, but, okay, it is spreading out more. So the Gore Gum is definitely making a difference. I'm now going to speed things up as I paint the rest of the yarn. I'm not sure how much color I'm going to add. I know I want to leave a fair bit of white and just have some little punches of color in there, but I will, um, you'll watch me sort of speed through the rest and then we'll come back and talk about steaming it.
going to stop here. Um, I dripped some navy on a section, so therefore I filled in one area, but we otherwise have some alternating white and colors. And I am curious to see what the edges of this will look like once I have steamed the yarn. I do need to go set up my steamer basket. Probably should have done that already. The steamer basket is all steamy. So now we can start wrapping up our yarn. I'm sort of pressing in that center a little bit so that way we don't, hopefully the colors won't bleed into each other. I'm leaving the white-ish edge at the outside and here we are just wrapping this up in a nice little jelly roll and now we're going to go into the steamer basket. There are just a couple of inches of water in the steamer basket. I'm going to pop our yarn in, put on the lid, and now we're going to steam for 30 minutes. And of course, I'm realizing now that the way I have this set up, I won't be able to quickly tell if the purples are turning purple, but we should know in a little bit. The 30 minutes of steaming are up. I have just turned off the stove and we can remove, oh dear, our yarn. <laughs> and look at that spread. When I pushed it, it looked like something squished. Um, huh. So we will have to see. But in the squish, it does look like the deep purple is looking purple, um, unless that's the navy. But I do need to let this sit and cool off completely before we unwrap the yarn. It's still a little warm, but I am itching to see how this came out. Ooh. move this down. I see a little cross bleeding there from where it came into contact, but I think that overall you can really, really see the difference um, from using guar gum versus no guar gum. Uh, the colors here spread out a lot more, and I'm not just talking about, you know, the contact where it came into contact with the other side of the skein. Um, the white spots, like right here, basically disappeared. Um, you know, and there was definitely white space there before I wrapped it up. So using the guar gum does help give you an extra layer of control when you are hand painting yarn. Um, even sort of in this area where I have like the different colors, these, the color changes are sharper where I have the guar gum. It's a little more blended because the colors spread a little more where there wasn't. I'm going to go ahead and let this finish cooling off so that way we can go wash the fiber. But I am really, really excited with how this has turned out. Let's wash our two skeins of cooled off yarn. There was a tiny amount of color left on the plastic wrap, but I'm not expecting to see a ton of color left in the yarn. I probably should have wrapped these other regions separately because the colorway is not perfect. Oh, I am seeing a little bleeding. Oh, we have some blues bleeding out. I suppose it's possible um, that there is some extra color, maybe with the guar gum that didn't like penetrate all the way into the fibers because it is so thick. Uh, I'm not even sure. Hopefully there will be bleeding for like a long time. That's sort of a bummer. Well, if you're having a lot of bleeding, you can always add in some vinegar into the soak and let it sit a while, or you could re-steam it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit. Um, just a tiny bit of clear dish soap. Sometimes that'll um, get even more color to come out. But all things considered, 
given the depth of color in the yarn. This isn't a huge amount of bleeding, but I do like to try to wash all of my yarn until the water runs clear, or at least as clear as I can make it. So I will be doing some more rinses on this, and then uh, once the water's clear, I will go hang it up to dry. It is always nice to see the rinse water from my Nina Soft Spin Dryer come out nice and clear. And the yarn is mostly dry and I can go hang it up now. What a difference a little guar gum makes when you are hand painting. The color repeats are shorter, the edges are sharper, there's less spread and blending in the skein that had some guar gum versus not. It was a lot easier for me to add the dye to the yarn without the guar gum. I had trouble sort of depositing it into the yarn. So I think that there is a lot more pigment overall in the skein with no guar gum than the one with. But I think that maybe if I were to try using squeeze bottles in the future, I'd have an easier time sort of applying and massaging that color into the fiber. Even if the dye quantities are slightly different between the two, there is no question that there is a lot more blending without using guar gum. Even if we just look at some of the sizes of the white gaps, um, or how in the middle section these colors have blended together, the transitions are smoother, and they're a lot more abrupt when we used the guar gum. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I love having the opportunity to compare and contrast one variable, I mean, I suppose this is very qualitative, but I still like being able to test out a variable to see the difference that it really makes when you are adding color to yarn. There is a lot of dye left over, so stay tuned because in the next episode of Dye Pot Weekly, I will be stenciling on a double-stranded sock blank with and without guar gum so that way we can see the difference that it really does make um, when we are dyeing with stencils. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, let me know what you think and what kinds of experiments you would like to see me do in the future. Make sure that you turn on notifications so you don't miss the release of a new video or live stream. If you are already a Chemnitz superfan and wish that you could play with the yarn that I've dyed, don't worry. <laughs> Go and check out my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, which is filled with over 100 skeins of hand-dyed yarn that have been featured in my videos. And if you look through the shop, sometimes you can even get some cool sneak peeks of what's coming up because in the item descriptions, I always give the video title and the publication date. Thank you so much for watching.